Okay, guys, here in this middle of the red circle, I am totally out of my comfort zone because it is the first time I do a speech in English. So I really need your support. Can I rely on you? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here and to talk to you face to face, not behind a computer wearing a pyjama pants and doing my makeup just like five minutes before an online meeting. We all had the same tricks. I feel more confident to meet you in real life because even if you have something unkind to say about me, about my hair, about my outfit, the way I stand or the way I speak English, you will do it in your head or with your neighbor discreetly. It doesn't really work like that on the internet. Internet. Many of uh, feminist activists leave social media after waves of insult, especially on Twitter, where the retreat system can be very aggressive, and this uh, a new kind of harassment against minorities and women in general. That's what I did. After years of sharing my opinion online and building a community of people interested in topics such as feminism and anti-racism, I left Twitter for my safety and my sanity, even though it was an essential platform for the visibility of my work as a journalist. One day, I read a comment under one of my videos interview for my book that says, she doesn't even realize that she is not interesting, but people listen to her because she's pretty. Well, the compliment sounds like an insult, isn't it? <laughs> um, after reflection, I understood why this sexist remark had hurt me. With all my experiences, I, as a young North African woman living in France, I realized that the deep, my deeper goal, the reason I do everything, is because I want to be heard and listened to, not seen or looked at. But despite all the seriousness and all the work I put in my book, I was like taken away from all my intelligence, as if a woman doesn't have the right to be pretty and smart, as if our body erased everything else. In our patriarchal societies, women are judged on the basis of their physical appearance or on uh, their look, and it's opposite to the intelligence. It's true that there is actually a beauty privilege uh, for those who meet fatphobic and racist beauty standards, such as having a clear skin, fun facial feature, or a slender body. And um, according to a study published in 2016 by two American sociologists, people considered as beautiful earn 20% more wages. And in our societies, beauty is still tied to having a clear skin and a skinny bodies even if Kim Kardashian and the new codes of Instagram have given some shapes to it all. The new ideal body uh, of social media is different from 30 years ago uh, with, uh, you know, the skinny and uh, white w model women's, of, uh, women's magazine. Today, shapes are fashionable, but still in an exclusive way. It means like you have a new kind of injunction to have a uh, a nice buttock, but still a thin waist. So when someone says I'm beautiful and I exist through that, I should be flattered, but I am not. Why? Because as a woman, I'm reduced to my body, which I'm trying every day and I'm learning every day to be more confident with because like all other women, we are told and we are educated to hate them. To be reduced to my body consoles everything I do and I produce with my mind and my creativity. As people have pointed out to me too many times, if I passed a difficult examination to, un to enter a prestigious school in France in journalism, it is because I am a pretty Arab woman. And if I wrote a book which had a good success, it's also because I am a pretty Arab woman. And if the video about my uh, journey, uh, published by the Media Brute, has exceeded 16 million views on Facebook, it is also because I am a pretty Arab woman. Sounds reductive, doesn't it? I'm not questioning the fact that in the image industry, appearance counts. Indeed, it has an impact on your representation. But for a smart man, like George Clooney, <laughs> um, being pretty is like an asset that's has up. Both for an intelligent, but for an intelligent woman, being pretty is a characteristic which erased everything else. 
And for racialized women like me, we know that a compliment on our body is deeply linked to some sexual fantasies. So please let it be clear here. I won't be your jasmine, and I won't belly dance with a snack around my neck. I realize that men, especially rich white ones, are born with a supreme legitimacy, while I have to fight every day to be considered as legitimate. I will define legitimacy, so in the social world, as a feeling of power linked to domination, which gives the rights and the ability to act and express oneself without his existence being questioned and threatened. It's an incredible freedom and uh, self-confidence that very few of us experience. On the contrary, many of us live with the feeling of illegitimacy uh, and questioning, always questioning our value and our skill at work, for example. According to the Journal of Behavioral Science, 70% of people worldwide uh, experience and suffer from the imposter syndrome at some point in their life. This is because the capitalist system always asks us to do more, to consume more, to be more, and it causes us to live in a kind of dissatisfaction permanently. This search of permanent profit for more to add amplifies the feeling of illegitimacy, because we have the, that feeling if we do not have enough, we feel like we are not enough either. But indeed, illegitimacy is the real norm. This is the title I gave to my first book, because I am illegitimate, and I want to remain so. Because from this unrecognized seat, I have such a unique view of the world. To accept being illegitimate is to stop chasing a legitimacy that will never, never be given to me. And to accept legitimate is to be free in this place of illegitimacy, to accept being illegitimate is to refuse to change and, on the contrary, to accept myself and to redefine myself every day just by myself. Legitimacy is a social construction that excludes many of us, as I told you, and uh, who reduce the field of possibilities. How many of you have given up on some dreams because they feel like they are not able to reach them? In our society, there are deep inequalities of means depending, of means depending on the environment where we grew up. There are inequalities in wealth, significant economic inequalities, which block the poorest in their daily lives. Legitimacy is deeply linked to these economic and social status inequalities. Those who never question their legitimacy have the financial means and the network to never be blocked in their lives. I'm not in this category. In the same way that white privilege gave like, some uh, protection to white person to not like, face racism. I will define who I am as a set of boxes, like boxes nested like Russian dolls. It means each box each box, took individually, is a part of my identity. This is a metaphor of the feminist and anti-racist theory of Kimberly Crenshaw called intersectionality. Uh, I advise you to watch her TED Talk. I don't know if you know the platform, but it is really worth the detour. And on this uh, theory, uh, you can also define yourself to this way. Can you... We are going to play a game here. Can you all please raise your hand? Please, everybody. Nice, okay. Nice. Men, now, can you turn it down if you are a man? Okay. <laughs> now, can you turn it down if you grew up in Europe? Okay. How many ends are still up? One, two, three, four. Four? Only four. Five, okay. And uh, <laughs> how many of you uh, grew up in the uh, upper middle class. Okay, so just like f four, okay, four hands just here. So the ends still raised are those of minorities 
from immigration and from working class background. You understand what I mean about intersectionality? So, taking the example of black women in America, Kimberly Crenshaw showed, showed in 1989 sorry, that the discriminations faced by one single individual can be multiplied. So, for myself, I am a woman. I am an immigrant from North Africa, from Morocco precisely, and I grew up in a labor class of a, a small rural town in the south of France. Being a woman, I suffer from sexist injunction and some specific inequalities. Being an immigrant, I have to deal with some other injustices. And having work working class parents definitely puts me on the non-dominant class. So, to summarize, as a working class immigrant from, uh, from Morocco, I have to deal with sexism, racism, and classism on my daily life. Let me tell you an anecdote to explain this. I was a student at Sciences Po Grenoble, uh, 2,000 kilometers from my family, who strongly believed in my studies and put all his savings in it. And uh, Sciences Po is one of the most prestigious schools in France in which you can enter after passing a difficult exam. And during my teenage years in the rural town, I told you, I was like, people told me a lot that this kind of school is not made for people like me. People like me from immigration and with working class parents. Uh, so, I was a student at this school at this moment, and I wanted to found an association called Arab World to speak about the political issues and also the culture of the region called Swana, Southwest Asia and North Africa. And I put all my efforts and all my money from my student's job into the association to create it. And with the, um, uh, the support of some volunteer, the association was created in uh, October 2015 and it still exists right now in the school. And um, at this, that time, I often heard about me, why does she always do too much? This is sexism, racism and classism at the same time. You will never, never heard about a white man that she is, he is doing too much. As women, we are asked to be discreet, to not take up too much place, space, sorry, and even to apologize for our ideas and for our creativity. We are not supposed to be self-confident. All industries, food, cosmetics, even clothing, thrive on our complexes. How many times have you heard about an ambitious woman that she was arrogant? How many times have you heard about a woman who talks loudly that she is vulgar or rude? And how many times have you heard about a successful woman that she, that she slept to succeed? Distrust is great toward women who try to challenge the system of domination, and it's even more violence for, for women like me, for non-white women. Arab women in classical literature and also in pop culture have always been sexualized and we are seen under the specter of sensuality and desire. So often, I want to get rid of all my boxes. I don't want to be an Arab anymore, I don't want to be a woman anymore, I just want to be seen as a woman being. It's kind of funny, because sometimes I forget who I am. I mean, it's just like in front on some injustice that I find myself saying, oh, this is who I am, I am an Arab woman, and this is a perception of people of me. Earlier in the, my speech, I spoke about cyberbullying and uh, on, on internet, I mean, the harassment on internet, and because internet as a non-regulated space uh, is a place where you can find the most objects and the most illegal words uh, on the planet. According to a study published in 2019, one in five young people is victim of harassment online. And victims are the same who are discriminated against in the daily life. So uh, women, non-white people, LGBT plus community, and persons with disability, etc. This is a proof that just as there is legitimacy in real life, there is 
also an access, an unequal access to legitimacy in, on internet. For so many years, I've been looking for a way to destroy those social assignments. I have been looking for a way to redefine myself and to, you know, decorate my own boxes. I freed myself when I gave up, when I gave up the quest of legitimacy. I blossomed when I decided to fully accept all my identities, especially when they are rejected, and to build my project to nourish them, not like to avoid them. I still have a lot of questions about how to fight effectively inequalities and how to offer us all e equality. And the queer and feminist author Belux always is always here to answer me through her, her book. And the answer is love, as simple as that. Because constantly wondering when you are doing something, if you are legitimate or not, is the very, very opposite of self-love. In her bestseller, All About Love, Belux defines love as a mean of action, not just like a feeling. She says, we choose to love, and to love requires respect, care, affection, responsibility, communication, and trust. So give it to yourself. Give, it this, this own, give yourself this own respect, this own love, and this own affection. The illegitimate women, immigrants, non-white people, we don't have anything to prove and we don't have to fight and to prove every day the value of our lives. Legitimacy is not necessary. This is my answer to all this question. Legitimacy is not necessary. We must ignore this dominant gaze that tells us to be quiet or to speak just if we are perfect. We just have to live our life with defining our own legitimacy, and this is the only solution for me.